Hello world, my name is Andy Silvers, and finally today we're going to discuss the new HP ZBook Fury G9. Alright, so today we're going to discuss one of HP's brand new workstation laptops, the update to the Fury lineup, specifically the Fury G9. We're going to take a look at it and discuss the product and how it is different from the previous product. However, I just want to let you know first that I am an author, YouTuber, and filmmaker. Uh, and if you're watching this video, you're likely watching it for free. And so uh, if you like to read, if you like to read fantasy, you know, contemporary fantasy, if you have um, children ages uh, 3 to 6 and or 8 to 12, well, guess what? That's a bunch of different age ranges, and I have a book for all three of those people. So check out my illustrated children's book, The Very Colorful Caterpillar, for ages 3 to 6. If your children are a bit older, check out my coming-of-age uh, novel for ages 8 to 12, called Red Sprites and Blue Jets. And for you teens and adults, check out my contemporary fantasy, Solomon Grando vs. the Jupiter Witch. It is an exciting, comedic, action-packed book. It's not too long or too short. I think that you'll really like it, and it helps me and helps the channel if you check it out. All of those books will be available at the link in the description. Okay, so the reason you're here is because HP finally updated their ZBook Fury lineup, specifically the G9. HP has, in fact, finally done a pretty substantive update to the Fury lineup. The way that HP tends to do this is they will update the chassis, or the body of the computer, and then they will keep that for two generations, and then they will update the electronics like the CPU, GPU, and RAM, typically every generation to keep up with whatever the latest and greatest is. So the ZBook Fury G8 and G7 both have the same body design, and I actually own one, the 15 inch to be specific, so I'm going to just show you real quick. This is the Fury 15 G8. You can see the design here. Um, you can see the back as well. It's got a lot of a lot of ventilation on the back there, which is very good for something that is supposed to have a ton of horsepower. So HP have made some pretty significant updates to this device, and I do like most of them. So physically, the device is about the same thickness it looks like, but it is a bit rounder in terms of the actual ergonomics and physicality, which very much reminds me of what Apple did with the MacBook Pro. Uh, the MacBook Pro used to have sharper edges and be a bit more boxy, and then they made it a lot rounder with the new uh, M1 Pro and M1 Max version. And it seems like HP is doing something kind of similar with the ZBook. Uh, I personally don't like it as much. I do prefer um, a more boxy, angular look, but obviously that is entirely subjective. As for the port selection on the new ZBook Fury, it appears to be about the same. It doesn't look like they've really changed it in any significant way, which is fine because the port selection was quite good. However, what is interesting is that it looks like and I'm just making sure here, this product was just um, announced just a few days ago, if not um, yesterday. It looks like there's not going to be two different sizes as there was before. So the ZBook Fury G9 appears to only come in one size, and it appears to be a 15-inch size, which I think is pretty reasonable. And this does make some sense because in terms of horsepower and specs, there was no difference, really, between the 15-inch ZBook Fury uh, G8 and the 17-inch ZBook Fury G8. Um, and now, the, there was one difference, which is port selection. The 17-inch ZBook had more ports. The 15-inch um, had slightly fewer ports, but they still had a lot of ports. So, this does, this does make some degree of sense. Um, the first thing that I want to say, although I will say that the HDMI appears to now be an HDMI 2.1 instead of HDMI 2.0 or 2.0B, which is a big deal actually because it means that you can run 8K displays at higher refresh rates. Um, so that's an, extremely, that's an extremely tangible benefit. However, what's interesting to me is actually the sort of slogan, if you will, on the top of the website. It says, so powerful, you'll forget it's a laptop. That's HP's marketing at the very top of the page. And I just think it's interesting because 
Um, one thing that's interesting about the ZBooks is they're actually not the most powerful laptops you can get, and that's intentional. I've mentioned this in previous videos. HP's workstation lineup is designed to be stable more than it's designed to be crazy fast. So in that light, um, HP doesn't push the ZBooks, um, any of them, quite frankly, especially at the laptop. The desktops, to some extent, yes. But they don't really push their laptops to be balls-to-the-wall performance. They're not interested. Instead, they want it to be stable, reliable, and cool. And I would say that my ZBook Fury 15 G8 is, in fact, all of those things. Um, as such, the ZBook Fury 15, no matter how high you configure yours, and I'm talking about the G8 for a second, no matter how high you configure it, if you go all the way to the Xeon W8 core CPU and the um, the uh, RTX A5000 GPU, you still only got a 200 watt power supply, which is a bit um, disappointing because uh, a lot of HP's competitors um, have mobile workstation laptops with say 240, 260 ish power supplies. And you might think 40 and 60 watts don't make a difference, but for mobile components, they make a huge difference in terms of say FPS in a game or in terms of render time. Um, and interestingly, HP themselves makes a laptop called the Omen, which is their highest-end gaming laptop, which I would highly recommend, the Omen 17, uh, if you're watching this and you're looking for a gaming laptop or a workstation that isn't going to cost you as much as a ZBook. That laptop, the Omen, comes with a 330-watt power brick. So, pretty substantial. And that's just, that's just the nature of mobile workstations. So, when HP says how powerful it is, I'm curious. Did they update the power brick? Did they make it more than 200 watts? I kind of think they did, but I don't know that for sure. Because right now, as of today, HP has not released the actual spec sheet for the new uh, ZBook Fury G9. They have not released the spec sheet, as far as I can tell. They give you some specs, but not all of them. So the design, as I said, is a bit rounder than before, which I'm not a fan of, but um, I think I would probably get used to it. Uh, what they've done is they've streamlined the device a little bit. So the ZBooks design, first off, doesn't have, and this is the G8 model, keep in mind, this is not the G9. Um, it doesn't have all the vent ports that it does in the back. You can see all that ventilation, kind of like a gaming laptop. The new G9 doesn't appear to have that. However, I say it doesn't appear to have it because I think that maybe it does. If you look closely at the hinge mechanism, it kind of looks like it, it opens the display, like the hinge goes all the way down to the bottom of the laptop right in the back. It's kind of hard to explain what I mean, but it's a very thick laptop. So in order for it to do that, that means there's a lot of space between the hinge. So between the back of the laptop and the hinge, shall we say. So I think that maybe a lot of the exhaust is actually right there. You can't see it in the photos because HP's current photos that, I, that I've seen don't actually show this. But I think there probably is a large grill kind of between the display and the keyboard area. And that's where a lot of the air vents out. Uh, as for the design, HP have finally done what all of us wanted, wanted them to do with the display, which is make it taller. Uh, the perks of having one on. Uh, so this is a ZBook uh, Fury 15 G8, the very um, last model from, from last year. This model um, has a 4K HDR display. It's a very good display, but it is a 16 by 9 display. So it's kind of hard to tell with the screen off. But at the bottom of the display is a very large bezel. I mean, it's a huge, thick bezel. They took the display and stretched it into the bottom of the laptop, which is something I've been wanting for forever. So now it has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. I would have preferred 3 by 2, but this is still a huge deal. Um, there also is a new uh, display option, their highest end one I would assume, which is a 4K OLED, um, 4K OLED touchscreen with 400 nits of peak brightness, which makes sense because OLED is extremely difficult to get bright because uh, first off, the brighter it is, the more likely there is to be burn in. Um, and also the more power it draws because each pixel has its own light. So uh, making an OLED screen bright is possible, but very difficult. Anyway, so let's move on from the display. The keyboard has been redesigned. Uh, there is still a number pad, thank goodness. At first I thought there was not one, but there is. Uh, and HP have, uh, I think, made the design look quite a bit better. So 
Last year, there's a, a laptop called the HP ZBook Studio G8, and HP has updated that as well to the G9. But that laptop came with the option of RGB lighting on the keyboard, and HP advertised, wow, it's the first woke station with RGB lighting. I think RGB lighting is fine, but it's not a priority for me. Anyway, the point is that HP have added RGB, per key RGB lighting, to the Fury lineup. So if you're into that sort of thing, it has it. Uh, what's interesting to me is that HP have gotten rid of the little joystick. So I'm not going to show on my laptop because it's too much of a pain to lift it up. But uh, basically, if you know anything about the Lenovo's ThinkPad lineup, they have a little joystick on the cent in the middle of the keyboard that you can use to move around the screen. And I've used it before. It's actually pretty convenient in a lot of cases. HP have finally done away with it for the G9 model. Um, not sure exactly why. I guess it wasn't popular enough. But in doing so... Um, they have also made the trackpad effectively bigger because what you have to understand, okay, what you have to understand about the G8 and by extension the G7 of the Fury is that there are buttons on the top and bottom of the keyboard. And one of the, oh no, sorry, the buttons on the top and bottom of the trackpad. And what you have to understand is the reason for this is so that you can use them for right and left click, obviously. And one of them you use with the trackpad itself, and the other one you use with the little joystick. But since the joystick is gone, HP is like, we need to get rid of the top row of buttons, which I think is probably a good choice because it makes the trackpad a lot bigger. So the trackpad is quite big this time around, which I appreciate. Uh, although I would highly prefer it be centered with the actual space bar. Uh, it is not, but that is just a small nitpick. And as before, there is a fingerprint reader on the keyboard deck on the right side. So let's talk about the internals and upgradability. So in this thing, this is where things get interesting because HP really have done a pretty significant redesign here. So first off, the keyboard doesn't come up anymore. So for the past, I believe, four or five generations of ZBook Fury, although it wasn't always called the Fury, but for the past five generations or so, the keyboard could basically be removed in order to access things like two RAM slots and, an, and another SSD slot, right? But it appears that's not the case anymore. HP have really pretty much redesigned everything so that now every component is accessible from the bottom. You just pull off the bottom panel, which is easy to remove just like before, and you can access the RAM and SSDs and, of course, the battery. So... I can't speak to exactly how much the battery is in terms of wattage, um, although I suspect it's uh, 95 watt hours or so, um, just like before. So the RAM situation appears to be uh, similar to before in terms of the amount of RAM. It goes up to 128 gigs, but now you can have DDR5 RAM, which makes sense. Um, and then HP says you can go up to 12 terabytes of storage, and I'm trying to, I'm still not exactly sure how they're doing that. Um, I, it looks like there's obviously four RAM slots, and it looks like they're stacked, which makes a lot of sense. It saves a lot of space to do that. As for the SSDs, I can see two that are next to each other. The point is that HP is boasting up to 12 terabytes of overall storage. As for the cooling, the cooling is basically the same as before. It's um, a vapor chamber and two large fans. So pretty much the same thing. And of course, if you, as you probably already know, HP is updated to the Intel 12th gen mobile uh, CPUs, which is a great thing because the mobile CPUs are indeed very powerful. Intel's 12th gen lineup is extremely good because it uses a 10 nanometer architecture and it uses a combination of uh, powerful um, um, cores and efficiency cores, which means that, H that HP is utilizing some pretty high core count CPUs now. Um, the laptop is ISV certified, which makes sense because HP is still using NVIDIA's workstation graphics cards, which includes things like the A1000, A2000, A4000. Um, I'm not sure if HP is going to offer things like the 
30, 70, 30, 80. However, I do believe the studio, the HPZ Book Studio G9 will be offering the 3080 Ti, but that, that conversation is for another video. So, in other words, this laptop has a lot of substantive updates. Uh, I can't speak to all the features, but I can tell you that it has Wi-Fi 6E, which makes sense. That is the latest, greatest Wi-Fi. I can also tell you that HP is planning on including Windows, uh, Windows 11 Pro uh, as the sort of default operating system. However, you can also choose Ubuntu Linux if you would like to. I would prefer Windows 10 Pro, which is what I put on my ZBook, but uh, I'm not sure right, right now if HP is going to offer that in the configurator. And I can basically guarantee you they're not going to offer that if you buy the computer pre-built. So that's the ZBook Fury 15 G8 in a nutshell. I know I missed a few little things here and there, but I covered the big stuff that I think is mostly relevant to the devices, particularly with regard to changes from the previous model. Uh, please comment in the, in the comment section, questions, comments. Tell me what you think of this product. Tell me what you think of the video. And if you have any questions for me, I keep a very close eye on HP's product lineup. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. So again, this product is just being announced. And I will post more videos in the future talking about the updates and giving you more information on the storage and the screen and the graphics cards. All right. If you like the video, please like the video and uh, subscribe. It really helps me out. And of course, as an author, it really helps me out if you check out the books in the video description. Got books for all ages and I'm writing new books every day. So check that out. I'll see you in the next video.